Tomorrow is the beginning of a major severe weather event that'll be taking place across a large chunk of the United States, which is going to bring the threat for significant damaging winds, large to very large hail, and several tornadoes where strong and long track tornadoes are also a possibility. But Monday's not the only day because we have to watch for severe weather from Monday all the way through Thursday, where there will be a chance for severe weather outbreaks all four of those days. So in today's forecast, we're going to break down everything that you need to know about this severe weather event and how this will impact areas like the Great Plains, the Midwest, and the Ohio Valley, and as well as the Mississippi Valley. But let's begin with what's going to be happening here over the next 24 hours across the United States, beginning with today's threat, which overall is not really concerning. It's overall going to be a very low threat for severe weather. The majority of this will actually be this afternoon across parts of South Texas. There's also another marginal threat back over in Ohio. Overall, I'm not super concerned about today, but I do want to mention that some damaging winds, large hail, and maybe even a couple of tornadoes will be a possibility. The tornado risk is quite low. This is the tornado risk for the rest of this morning out of that line of storms that's pushing across the southeast parts of Texas and into Louisiana right now. But again, very low risk overall. And then this afternoon, we'll have a little tornado risk develop across parts of South Texas. But I do think this will not be anything like what we've seen the last few days where we've had a couple or even several really large tornadoes across parts of Texas. So for the next few hours, storms will continue to kind of die out as they move to the east across Louisiana and as well as Arkansas. Isolated winds still possible. This afternoon, we'll have a cluster of storms develop across South Texas. That'll really begin around lunchtime. And through the afternoon, those will continue to move eastbound. Overall, again, nothing too significant is expected out of that. And then by the time we get closer to midnight, we are done with severe weather. Now let's talk more about tomorrow, which is going to be the beginning of a multi-day severe weather event across the United States, where there will be several shots for severe weather anywhere from the Great Plains, back into the Midwest, even parts of the Ohio Valley and the Mid-South, and even down into the Mississippi Valley, we'll have a shot for severe weather. I do want to mention today's forecast will be heavily focused on what's ahead tomorrow because it's going to be a significant severe weather outbreak, but I also want to mention we'll be li likely live tonight, so make sure that you're subscribed to the channel. I'm going to do a full detail breakdown on every single day in tonight's live stream, so subscribe to the channel if you've not already. But this is what the threat is for tomorrow. The Storm Prediction Center has gone ahead and upgraded parts of South Kansas and as well as Oklahoma into a four out of five severe weather threat, which is a moderate risk for severe weather. This is where the greatest concern is for severe weather tomorrow, where significant damaging winds, very large hail, and as well as several tornadoes are a possibility, where long tracked and strong tornadoes will also be a possibility. Notice that enhanced risk. It's also quite large. This is where we're going to have numerous severe weather events as well, with very large hail and tornadoes being the main concern here. This goes back into parts of Nebraska and as well as back into parts of Oklahoma and as well as Kansas. Now, I don't want you to really ignore this area. This is still an area that's going to be seeing significant severe weather. Even though you're not in the highest risk, you are dealing with at least some threat of significant severe weather. The slight and the marginal threats are overall pretty large as well. They go from Texas back into western Illinois and as well as southern South Dakota, where again, the main concern will be some damaging winds, maybe some large hail, and maybe even a couple of tornadoes. What This is the hail threat for tomorrow. Overall, it is very significant. Notice that hatched area. That is where we're looking at for at least the potential for greater than two inch diameter hail. I do expect at least a couple of storms tomorrow evening to probably get closer to four inch hail with how significant this environment is going to be. But that purple area there represents a 45% chance within a 25 mile radius of large to very large hail. So that is something that you definitely want to keep in mind and bring your car into your garage tonight. Do that ahead of time because there, there could be some massive hailstones tomorrow evening across parts of Oklahoma and Kansas. The tornado threat, once again, it is much more elevated. It's across most of central and southern Kansas, and it also goes back into Oklahoma and as well as southern parts of Kansas, where that greatest threat is, where that red shaded area is. But I do want to mention again, you need to be very vigilant anywhere in this yellow area, because anywhere in this yellow area, we could see strong and or long track tornadoes, and that does include areas like Kansas. I cannot urge that enough, because again, that red area, I know you're really focused on that one area there where the greatest threat is, but there is also going to be a chance for that outside of the red area that's across parts of Kansas and as well as Oklahoma. So definitely make sure that you're staying weather aware. And even if you're in the brown or green shaded areas, you should at least have a tornado action plan in place and have multiple ways to receive alerts. We'll probably be live most of tomorrow as well. So make sure that you're subscribed to the channel. Here's what the wind threat is for tomorrow. Overall, again, it's not nearly as high as the hail threat, but we do have a hatched area across parts of East Kansas. And that does include Kansas City, where there could be a 
few storms in a Boeing segment that will produce the threat for significant damaging winds as high as 80 to 85 miles per hour. So quite a significant day again ahead tomorrow. Now this setup is pretty crazy. This is our jet stream as we go into tonight and tomorrow. We're going to have a trough eject right over the Rocky Mountains. This is going to be a negatively tilted trough and we're going to get a strong southwesterly flow across parts of Kansas, Nebraska, and Oklahoma. And this is going to lead to quite an environment overall. I mean, this is only the jet stream doesn't give you an idea of the lower levels, but at least gives you an idea that this is a pretty potent trough that's going to be moving across parts of the central plains. But once we go into Tuesday, this gets pretty interesting because we're going to have another reorganizing trough here across parts of the northern plains and as well as back over into the Midwest, which could also bring another risk for severe weather on both Tuesday and Wednesday. Tuesday would be across parts of the Midwest and possibly even back over in parts of the Mid-South as well. Don't forget this area. That might actually be a bit more significant. And then as we go into Wednesday, I do think we'll have another threat for severe weather, which would probably extend from anywhere really back over in the Southern Plains, back into the Ohio Valley. And by the time we go into Friday, this eventually will move off to the east. We could get another round of severe weather on the East Coast on Friday, maybe even the Ohio Valley. Uh, but once we go into Saturday and Sunday, this all moves out. And I think we'll have a much quieter weather pattern for the majority of the following week of May. So that's good news. But unfortunately, the next four to five days look really active across most of the country. Now, let's talk more about what's expected tomorrow, because again, that's the main focus of this forecast. And we'll talk more about what's ahead on Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday in our live stream tonight. Again, make sure that you're subscribed to the channel. With that said, I do want to show you something I've never shown you before. And this is for Monday. These are the hodographs. I don't usually show these, but what this essentially means is the wind shear and as well as the wind speed that we're basically looking at here throughout the atmosphere, the change of wind speed, and as well as the wind direction. And why is this important? Well, it gives us an idea of the rotation in the atmosphere. Notice these hodographs as we go into Monday afternoon. They do get pretty interesting here. I mean, we're talking about a lot of torque in the atmosphere. And when that happens, we usually do get, again, tornadoes. And that's what we're looking at, at least on the NAM3K model, which does show that more spin in the atmosphere. And if we have more spin, again, that's going to lead to more of a tornado risk. And that's really going to be focused across parts of western Oklahoma and as well as southern parts of Kansas. So that's really the main area that I'm the most concerned about, which is hence why we have a moderate risk now there for tornadoes. These are the significant tornado parameter values, which I've definitely shown you guys this before. Uh, like once again, the values are the highest really across this entire area from western Oklahoma back into parts of southern Kansas. You might see those values a bit higher back down in Texas, but the problem is there's not going to be any storms there. Or really, that's a good problem to have, not having storms there. We don't want tornadoes there either, but uh, unfortunately, this is the area that we're talking about that greatest concern, which again would be western Oklahoma and as well as southern Kansas, where those values are the highest. Those brighter colors would be representing, unfortunately, the higher potential there for there being tornadoes, which again, some strong tornadoes will also be a possibility. So for the timing, storms will start to fire up around about 2 o'clock or so in the afternoon in Nebraska. Luckily, these will not be super significant, but as we go throughout the afternoon, we'll have more storms ramping up right across parts of Kansas. Now, these are actually going to be relatively slow moving at first. So if they are slow moving, we could get a couple more drunk NATOs like what we saw last week. Just keep that in mind. But I do think these storms will really speed up as we go later into the evening. This will be right around six to seven o'clock. Notice a huge cluster of storms. But what we're really watching for here is anything that's discreet right in western Oklahoma and southern Kansas during the evening. That is where the greatest tornado risk will be. And anything up here is primarily going to be large hail, damaging winds, and perhaps a couple of tornadoes and maybe even an isolated strong tornado. But I think overall, the storms that are across central Kansas and back in Nebraska will be more linear, which means more of a damaging wind and hail risk. Notice this as we go later in the evening, though, in the NAM 3K model, again, showing more of these discrete supercells. And once again, anything that's discrete will have a much better chance of producing long tracked and strong tornadoes. And then once we go in later into the evening, so around 9 to 10 o'clock, those storms move to the east. We'll have a Boeing segment or a line of storms likely develop, and this will probably be producing damaging winds across much of the Midwest as we go into Tuesday morning. So keep that in mind. Either late uh, Monday night to Tuesday morning will be the time frame to watch for that. But overall, the question mark remains how strong will that line of storms be? Because if it weakens pretty quickly, uh, overall damaging winds might not even really reach parts of the Midwest like the Chicago suburbs. So that's something to also keep in mind. With all that being said, we are going to again have a live stream more than likely tonight, and that'll break down everything that you need to know about what's upcoming both Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and as well as Thursday of this week with more details. So again, make sure you're subscribed to the channel and click the bell icon down below so you're notified when we do go live. But I do want to point out that there will probably be another threat here for some severe weather, even across parts of the Ohio Valley and the Dixie 
Alley as we go into Tuesday. So we'll be watching that closely. And then Wednesday will be across parts of the Ohio Valley, Midwest, and probably even in the Southern Plains. And as we go into Thursday, things will shift towards the East Coast, maybe even some parts of the Ohio Valley, again, included in a threat there. So make sure you subscribe to the channel. I'll be going live tonight answering your questions as well. Make sure you stay tuned. And I appreciate you watching today's video.